Yeah. And it's Freak Nasty, and you're watching Humvee TV. Let's uh, let's see what your fans had to ask you, man. Okay. I'm, uh, now, you, you have not seen this. This is not like a magic trick or something we have not met before. <laughs> Freak, you're a big name and all, worldwide renowned. Of all the places you could be right now, why'd you choose Humboldt? First question. Okay, what was his name? His Alistair. name? Alistair. 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 Why Humboldt? Um, I get invited to play up here a lot now, and it's fucking awesome because um, the, the, the people up here are becoming really musically educated and know their underground music, and they're looking for something different and something more uh, fu future forward kind of vibe. And it's uh, I'm lucky enough to be able to, to come up here and actually a, and get gigs and play up here. So it's a it's a privilege to come up and play in Humboldt, man. I'm I'm really happy to come up here. <laughs> Do you feel it's different? Like when you're in LA, uh, there's a hundred concerts going on every street, so it's almost like everyone in LA is spoiled. And then when you come up to Humboldt, it's like we've been waiting for this. Yeah, people Do you feel that. Keen. Yeah, people want to rave. It's great, man. I mean, I play in places all over the world like that, where maybe in London or New York or. LA or you know the big cities in Europe, people have kind of had so much that they're um, that they're they I wouldn't say jaded, but they just got spoiled for choice, you know. And when you come places like this, people want to go out and have a good time, and they're not afraid to throw down. They're and not just, afraid and, to and throw down and yeah, party. Yeah, and I think it's yeah. that makes a big difference because you have that raw enthusiasm, and it r reminds me of. Um, of uh, you know the when people first started going out and raving and the music was new and exciting and there wasn't this thing like oh I've been there heard that before you know people just want some crazy shit and they want to have a good time and the the attitude in this place is awesome as well people come out and they just at, they, they um everyone knows each other a bit and they chill and they party and and there's I haven't seen any problems out here it's wicked so. That's why Humboldt's an awesome place. The people are great, and the people want to have a good time and listen to good music. So you were just mentioning about your music. Remember, we were speaking earlier, and you said when you started doing that particular side of the music, you really heard a lot of people. You played it at Burning Man. It was one Burning Man show mm -hmm. that you guys started really hearing that sound progress and progress in other yeah. artists, and then mm -hmm. that's when you decided to take the next step. And that's where you're going with the current sound that we heard at Nocturnum last night. Yeah, just trying to play. I mean, people. People have heard dubstep's obviously big here and it's big all over the world really now. And and, and uh, but maybe th two or three Burning Man's ago when I first played it there, the, the Burning Man, Man crowd just stood and stared at me the first time I played it because it was a, it's a new sound. And now it's not so new anymore. It's cool. I love the music and probably half, about half my set still dubstep. But uh, you know, there's lots of cool shit coming out now that's an up tempo sound and it's different and. So uh, that's what I'm playing more of. Last night you, you, you added a lot of up-tempo to your set. Yeah, I've never heard you do that before. Yeah, it's kind of more of that bang. It's somewhere in between bass line shit from Northern England and some kind of samba weird I was going to say it was shit. almost like salsa. Salsa vibe. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Um, also the fast dance hall stuff's a bit like that as well. So I had a bit of that thrown in. Yeah, there's this. I'm trying to pick and choose. I was like, it's just wearing me out, man. <laughs> I don't know, because it's fast as well. That's the thing, it's 125 it was, yeah. BPM, so it's kind of rave tempo. It's 125? 145. 145. Yeah, so yeah, no wonder why my neck hurts. But faster still, right? Because I'm just mixing it in and out of dubstep, so the dubstep yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. is kind of 140 BPM odd. And then, but a lot of this shit's faster, the stuff from up north. So, you know, they're 145, 100, you know, getting up to the 150s if you're pitching it up. So it's kind of, they walk me out, just jumping up and down behind the deck. So, uh, uh, they, yeah, but it's dope. There's, I'm picking the kind of bastard child of different scenes. You know, there's odd little tracks that don't quite fit in in each scene and trying to make a sound out of it, you know, make, make something a bit different. But uh, so that's the, the evolution your music's going to, more like that. You're going to kind of shy from dubstep or make it less of your scene, less of your show, and more just keep going yeah, with the originality. Just keep, look, just keep evolving. For, looking for new sounds. Yeah, you man. Know? I mean, yeah. It's, it's, How could you yeah, dub yourself one genre of music? I mean, no. you wouldn't want to do that, he right? He couldn't do that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, people know me for breakbeat, yeah. and that's something that I'm always, you know, I feel, I'm ha I'm feel lucky and happy to have had that opportunity, so I'm never going to be like, I'm not breakbeat, I'm, I'm this or that or the other, you know? I mean, that's what people know me for, but that's fine. That's you pioneered. If people come and expect that to when I play, then that's a different thing, you know? And I think as an artist, you, you've got to kind of be larger than the scene that you come from. I mean, in a way, the breakbeat scene, when it evolved in England, was very diverse. Kind of like dubstep is now, or drum bass was. When it came out, there was a whole lot of different sounds, and people gave it a name, but really, if you were to listen to some of the tracks individually, 
you go, where's the coherent sound in this? It still it's, all that's sounds. Just, you don't know what genre is genre. You can't. It's so hard so to describe. Really. In every genre of music, there's subdivisions and subdivisions exactly. of the subdivisions. Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> Crazy. It always derived from a root source, right? Yeah. 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 yeah totally. So it's, yeah, I'm not genre specific in that way. For me, I guess it's bass, just bass music, good bass music, you know. That's Every one of your CDs seems different to me, totally. Yeah, I try to just keep pushing forward because there's, there's so much good music coming out all the time as well, you know. And first of all, as an artist, you can hear other stuff and take that into account. And the other thing is you just got to keep moving forward yourself, you know. It's just to keep it interesting. If it's your life, it's like anything, like what you guys mm -hmm. do, you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Exactly, like Keep this interview right now, it's the first time we've tried asking fans, you know, this is the debut yeah, here of having someone in our studio idea. too, so man, what a good first guest. <laughs> right on. Let's move on with these questions here. Indeed. Hey, Freak, I just want to know, man, if you can party with any DJ and perform one night anywhere in the world, what DJ would it be with and uh, where would you party? 